thank you. Thank you, Nancy, for celebrating the 22nd Happiness Happiness Month with us. I can't believe we've been around for um, 22 years on this the celebration. So thank you for participating. So I met Nancy in one of a, a LinkedIn video class that we were both taking to try to um, improve our video scripting and everything series. So we've kind of, you know, we met on social media and I, we followed each other and, 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 and become fr friends of sorts or the friends like social media friends that we all are. We live in different states, so we haven't had a glass of wine yet. Um, so Nancy, though, one of the things that always struck me about her is she was always up to trying new things. And even if they were difficult in the video recordings and whatnot, she she seemed to always find delight and fun and and humor in them. So I thought to myself, Nancy is an easily amused person. So I'm inviting her here today to talk to us about being amused as a type of happiness. So welcome, Nancy. Thank you, Pamela, for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. And um, I love um, your focus on happiness. I think there's not enough focus on it in the world today. So this is a wonderful topic. Thank, thank you so much. And by the way, Nancy does all things employee benefits if your company happens to need that. So the link is connected to this post. So um, like I said, she's, she should be a happy benefit helper. <laughs> and that can be hard to find. So anyway, so what is your story? When I asked you to come up with a story about being amused and how, you know, that type of happiness, what kind of popped through your mind or what, or what are you willing to share or? <laughs> well, what can be shared publicly anyway. Um, no, I, I am, um, I thought that was actually, I would kind of appreciated when you asked me to talk about that particular topic or that type of happiness, because I am indeed easily amused. Um, and as I mentioned to you early, oftentimes I'm amused at myself. Um, I tend to crack myself up for no good reason, but, um, when you had mentioned about the way that we became connected through the um, LinkedIn video bootcamp that we did, it did bring a story to mind because um, we did a series um, that was called The Client. And basically it was a spoof on the Bachelor series. And we took a client and they were interviewing different brokers and we were kind of highlighting the bad things that brokers um, tend to do in our industry. And so my son and I were played all the characters in the video and we had different wigs and it was hard to get through it because we would just take one look at each other and I would be laughing crying because it was just so funny to me that we were you know trying to play all these different characters but uh, I think that's a really good visual example of being amused but I, I just I find amusement in very small, odd things that a lot of people wouldn't find amusing, but I think it's a way of maintaining a positive attitude. And so I do look for those opportunities to have a good chuckle, whether it's at something outside of me or at myself as well. So, so what's like an example of like, um, cause I'm going to, I'm going to guess you use this as one of your tools to, to, um, keep yourself, you know, uplifted. So what's an example of something if you were, were flustered with technology or having one of those happiness zapping moments, what, how does amusement come in and help you cheer up or find your, find, or feel a little bit better? Because I always define happiness is when we feel a little bit better in this moment over what we did before. So happiness can be like a stair step. Sometimes we have, we're really high on the case and sometimes we might be kind of lower at the bottom of the case. So you could be anywhere with amusement. It can take you all over the staircase of happiness, but um, what would be like something that, you know, you like you just know can, you could find amusement in? Um, you know, I don't know that I look to one particular area, but I do always look for an opportunity to change my mindset um, because I was, this morning, as a matter of fact, I had a regularly scheduled um, LinkedIn live video and it turned out to be a complete disaster. My technical difficulties all over the place. I had to call it after five minutes. Um, just didn't turn out the way that it was supposed to. That's frustrating because I'm live, I've got people tuned in and I'm failing. So we called it and I was pretty hard on myself for a few minutes and, you know, trying to work myself out of it. And, you know, the person in the office next to me sent me a quick little Teams message. It's like, um, sounds like somebody needs a mimosa this morning. And, you know, and my, and my response was clearly, you know, I can immediately change my mindset with just 
a, a quick little comment like that, whether it's to myself or coming from somebody else. But I do try not to stay in those places. I have my moments. I am just like anybody else and I can get angry and frustrated and down on myself, but that's not a place I like to spend a lot of time. Well, yeah, because it doesn't help us, which this now leads into, we have two, it sounds like you a, have a team that feels comfortable sharing their amusement with you yes. as well. So that's, that's great leadership. So yay, we're going to applaud that. Um, but so Paul, let's go into the next couple of questions, which um, I suspect amusement could still come up. And I should get a link to that video if you've got it posted. We I do actually, I will, I will send that to you. So people can get that visual because it sounds fun and amusing. <laughs> Um, but so practical happiness is my book that came out this year and principle one is happiness is personal. So what is one of your happiness as a personal? So it might not be your spouses, your kids, your friends, your coworkers. It's just like one of those things that, and it could be there, there's two, but what's one of your happiness as personals? I think for me, it's doing something that brings me joy and that's not always the same thing. But um, I love to cook, I love to bake, and oftentimes time spent in the kitchen just focusing on a long, complicated recipe and allowing myself just to be a part of that process brings me a lot of happiness. Um, it can be taking some personal time to have my nails done or my hair done or something like that. Um, spending time with friends, reading a good book, drinking a good glass of wine with friends. I mean, there's a, there's a lot of um, different opportunities, but really it's something that, like you say, it's personal and it's something I know that will fill my tank back up. I would say enjoy is one of our 31 types of happiness. So, and I, and I think cooking is one of those things that's also love and a lot of types of mm -hmm. happiness are connected to, to, to cooking. So our final question is, happiness zappers. And we already sort of addressed it a little bit, but I want to go ahead and give you a chance to say more on, on it if you want. So happiness zappers are those things that can kind of zap our happiness away. And I define them into five categories. And the principle in the book is happiness zappers are manageable. So I believe personally that we either let a happiness zapper manage us or we manage it. And that's, that's a choice we make. And that's everything from the biggies that like are connected to grief to like a small annoyance that you won't remember a year from now. So there's everything in the middle. So the, the zappers are unhappiness, stress, fear, chaos, and annoyances. Now, obviously unhappiness is, is the big one. So like I said, loss, and that could be obviously everything from death to just like a health change. And we're like, wow, I can't eat my favorite food anymore, but it's still a loss for you. Um, to, you know, like I said, annoyances are those things like the incident you talked about this morning. Will you remember it a year from now? Maybe, but it'll be right. such a memory it won't really matter. So it falls in the annoyance category. Um, how do you like personally manage happiness zappers? And you don't have to pick any specific one, but what's one of your zapper management tools? Again, I don't really like to spend a lot of time feeling unhappy or stressed. So I'm always looking for how do I change my mindset? How do I find a way to reset my expectations? And I think that has as much to do with it as anything else is looking at are my expectations causing me unhappiness? Um, you talked about well, unhappiness or loss being a big issue. Um, quite frankly, as an older female, it's sometimes really challenging to look at a picture of yourself from 10 years ago and go, oh my gosh, what's happened to me? And to continually reset the expectations of what we're supposed to be now. And that is a continuing effort and process to reevaluate and reaffirm yourself and say, okay, I'm doing okay. I don't need to look like that person, you know, that I was 10 years ago or that other person in the room with me that's 10 years younger than me. I'm in a different place in my life. So I think it's really um, about expectations. No, and that's great, which also trickles into principle three, you didn't even know it, called happiness changes as we change. And part of the, that would be, like you said, you, you, you summarized it beautifully about expectations and, and embracing those changes and being able to say, hey, it's okay that I'm not wherever I was 10 years ago because I'm where mm -hmm. I'm at now. Right. When you're in that present mindset, you're 
if you're constantly regretting or, or reminiscing, and we call it nostalgia, so nostalgia is a type of happiness, but if we're constantly seeing that from a, a vantage point of being sad, we're missing so much present happiness. We're mm -hmm. missing so much happiness that's still happening in the moment. So thank you for sharing that story. Any, any other happiness tidbit you want to share before we sign off? Well, I do think that we always need to look for opportunities for a good laugh. So I think that you cho you choosing um, amusement for me was a great topic because there are so many little things that we can do just to put a smile on our face. And the second that you physically smile, it completely starts to change you internally as well. So I think yeah, it, it kicks off all those good endorphins. I, I yeah. personally am somebody who I call myself easily amused. So if I'm in one of my funks. I can just go take a walk outside and I'll probably see something in nature that makes me laugh or grin, or I could go watch a cat video. I was or... going to say, I'm not going to lie. I'm not above watching a TikTok cat video just to, to make me laugh. And it just changes. Yeah. A dog video or a baby video. Like, yeah, there's just so many things you can do that just make you, or I laugh at myself. One of my favorite things on amusement was I didn't see the remake of the movie Arthur, but the original one with Dudley Moore and Liza Minnelli. Mm -hmm he's telling a story he's laughing and the person he's with is like what's so funny i don't i don't get it and he's like sometimes i just think funny things of course he's <laughs> drunk in that scene but he's like sometimes i just think funny things and and i just i think if we have the ability to do that we can always like just upgrade our mood almost any time so yep. thank you nancy for being here and i'm gonna um so I'm going to turn off the video, but thank you so much for being here and celebrating Happiness Happens Month with us. Thank you.